angels we have heard on high sweetly singing o'er the plains in the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strength gentlemen. Welcome. <laughs> Three marks in the back. Uh, well, we are happy to see you and happy to have you here this morning. Um, are your tummies full? Wasn't that delicious? All those yummy. Can you hear me okay? Um, we're so grateful for the, the men that have helped us and so many ways for this this event and um, but the food prep team they've been busy busy all week so um, who did some shopping already and found some awesome treasures yes good stuff well there's gonna be more of that and I'll tell you about that towards the end so um, and then doesn't this place look amazing yes so so grateful for our um, you know creative gals who have the vision but then it takes all the helping hands to to pull it together so we want to thank all of them too and we have so 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 much more for you this morning um, food for your soul nourishment for your heart and mind and treasures that will go home deep inside of you and um, bless you not just through the Christmas season but in the year ahead so um, let's let's just pray and give the rest of this morning to the Lord please, please join me Lord, we come before you today um, already in thanksgiving and just acknowledging you. Um, Lord, my heart is full. There is joy, joy only found in you, joy found in the, the fellowship and the relationship of sisters in Christ, God, and just the reality of the gift that you gave your, your son, your precious son for us and that impact in each of our lives, Lord. Whether we're walking strong with you or we're climbing along the way or maybe we're here today and we, we don't know you personally, Lord. We are ready this morning to hear from you, to have um, your word touch our hearts and our minds and transform us and change us, God. And Lord, I, I just thank these women, Lord. I, I love the word let in our theme, Lord. It's a choice. And I love that they chose this morning to come and be in your presence and hear your word and worship before your throne. And Lord, we know that pleases your heart and you are here and you're going to meet each one of us. So we commit this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So on behalf of um, Denise Salvato, I'm gonna make her stand up real quick. Put her, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Denise is um, Pastor Rob, our senior pastor's wife, and oversees our women's ministry. And on behalf of her and all the Calvary Vista Women's Ministry, we want to welcome you and thank you for coming. We thank you, our, our faithful gals at Fellowship here, and um, call this your church home. And, and those of you who are our dear family and friends that come. And some of you, we just get to see you once a year on this Christmas event. And it's so fun to walk down the hallways and go, oh, I met your mom last year, or this is your sister, or some of you have new little babies. And it's just so sweet to see um, everybody's stories unfolding and, um, from year to year. So we're, we're glad you're here and hope that you're being blessed. Um, as we prepare for our time in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask you to please um, silence your cell phone. Um, if you can go without it being on, that's awesome. Like, that's so good. I was away on a vacation, and we didn't have cell coverage for, like, certain periods of time, and we all survived. It was all good. <laughs> but I realize some of you have children under the care of husbands at home or little ones or teenagers or whatever, and you want to keep that lifeline, and we understand that. So just put it on um, vibrate. We would appreciate that. So before we get into um, worship and the word, we have all of those fun baskets to give away. So Denise and the gift team, come on up. Lynn Kixmuller and her gift basket team have been working really hard the last few months to get all kinds of donations and good things. And um, that's the end result. And then they made them so beautiful, almost too pretty to open. But then it's like, nah, we're opening that. <laughs> so hopefully we have all your tickets. OK, so here's how it's going to go. Um, we're going to pull the names. And I'm going to read the name. And forgive me if I don't get your name right. And if it's you, just stand up where you're at. And these gals will bring it to you. You don't have to come down. And we're going to kind of go pretty quickly, so, you know, I'm going to say hold your applause, shouts of joy, happy dancing in the aisle <laughs> until the end. <laughs> I know some of you have your fan clubs with you and all that kind of good stuff, so, um, but we're going to, we're going to have some fun, okay? Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. Here we go. So, Lynn, you're going to keep us on count with how many we got left. Okay. Ramona Lee. Stand up. If it's you, stand up. Stacy Valdez. <laughs> Teresa Corti. So these are the Yeah, so pick a mix. Yeah, so pull a mixture. Katherine Johnson. Morgan Santos. Stand up over here, okay. Mary Lowe. Michelle Young. Oh, and Michelle, she just got that in at the end, too. I saw that go in there. Rebecca Urbina. Kelly Lynn. Bryn Hebert. Carla Flores, way in the back. Oh, man. Isn't this fun? I need glasses for this one. Oh, Cheryl Bakai or Bakay? Cheryl? All right. Laura Holtel. <gasps> Hannah Cottage. Yeah, woo! <laughs> That's her daughter. That's my daughter. <laughs> no collusions or anything. <laughs> Suzanne Kuiper. Keeper Kuiper. Right there. Okay. Jenna Combs. Yay, Jenna. She has a baby somewhere. Right over here. Okay. How we doing? Desiree Hernandez. Anna Fairchild. Jeannie Leeper. 
Karen Cole Robbins. <laughs> Julie Urbina. Woo! Okay, that's another little family relation. Yay. Becky Bennett's. Becky. Tawny Marley, right here, yeah! <laughs> Somebody really wanted one. <laughs> Alina Salvato! <laughs> okay, here's a, st here's a sweet story about Ellie. She didn't think her ticket got in, and she's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. So see, the Lord was like, <laughs> blessed her humility. Yes, I would have been like, greedy. <laughs> Last one? Maggie Paws. Right there. Okay. okay, two more. Oh, there's no name on this one. <laughs> you will receive a heavenly blessing. <laughs> Hoy Etherly. Last one is Irene Serena. I never say your name right at the end. Irene. Okay, you're up. All right, enjoy, ladies. Okay, round of applause. All of you are great sports. Okay, you already got a little taste of Hillary and Kate, and they're amazing, and you're in for a treat. So as they come up and make their way, they also have Emmett and Sean with them this morning. And um, they are going to just take us into the throne room. Um, I want to stand to your feet. We're going to sing uh, carol and then, you know, sit whenever you want to. You can go ahead and have a seat and just enjoy their music. Um, but I know that you're going to be completely blessed and encouraged this morning. Okay, so would you give them a warm welcome?
much ladies. Uh, as was said, we are Hillary and Kate. I am Hillary. This is Kate. And will you give it up for our band? We have Sean Caldwell over there on the upright bass. <laughs> Sean came all the way from Oceanside this morning. <laughs> he loves doing these women's events with us. Don't fool. They try to kick him out at every, every event we do with him. And then we also have Emmett Franz over here on the Dobro. He's from Arkansas. And there's one other man in this room you need to give it up for, and that's the sound man right back there. Um, well, we have just a couple of our own songs this morning, and then we'll do some more Christmas songs with you guys. Um, but this one of ours is called You Will Come. the lover's part, we played it only For the solace we'd find For convention or the fear of being lonely And while we wasted away The adversary came to play among the ruins Like the fool we became to blind to see the chains still bind the free when we So wait on the tracks, and the moaning in the cracks was for your coming. Watch the wind stir the dust, see the reddish rue of frost, and hear the humming. And until dawn breaks day, I have only time to waste, and I am alone. Will you free me from the temporary? Lead me to the temple where we'll be forever.
Thank you. Well, this last one of ours, uh, before we do one with you guys, is a brand new song. A uh, Christmas song we wrote last week. And it's called, <laughs> you're some of the first people to hear it, so uh, this is called Raise It Up. Raise it up and raise it high David's star in the winter sky So all will come to know it's light Raise it up and raise it high Oh, raise it high Raise it up and raise it high The angel song God has heard his people cry, so raise it up, he'll raise it high, oh raise it high. So bring in silver, bring in gold, the long-expected king foretold. song of hope in a baby's cry our salvation born to die so raise it up and raise it high oh raise it We have one last one for you guys if you want to stand and sing it with us. The 
stars are brightly shining This is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error And the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn just saying what a weary world rejoices, right? 
an O night divine when Christ was born because this world is weary and it's confused and there's just so much crazy going on around us, amen? amen? And we can get so taken by all of that and so, you know, that it's so important that we keep our eyes on Jesus because he truly is divine and his divine power can work in us and uphold us and give us a reason to rejoice in the midst of it. Because I know that there's many of you where, where it's a happy day and we're rejoicing, but there's many of you carrying amazing weights right now and hard trials and a lot of things going on. And holidays are not always the easiest time of year because there's a lot of, as we learned last Sunday, a lot of messy family. So um, we need today, and I'm so glad you're here. And when we prayed about who to bring, it was like, Janie Alfred is the woman we need to hear from. Um, she's in, just impacted my life personally and so many's over the year, but she's just going to give it to you real with a little Southern in there. But she, she's got a message of hope and joy for us. And ladies, I want us to be able to leave here today letting joy live loud in our lives, right? Empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can do that, and we need to do that. And I hope that you're so inspired by this message. So will you welcome, please, Janie Alfred. There we go. I'm sure none, I think. Oh, yeah. Good morning, beautiful ladies. Oh my goodness, I didn't know all of you were back there. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what I say after I eat too many potato chips. I didn't know it was all back there. <laughs> Over the lips, onto the hips, right? Well, I love what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about joy. And when I think of my childhood, one of my favorite songs was, I've got the joy, 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 down in my heart, right? Where? Down in my heart. Oh, you guys are so good. You're so good. You had that good food this morning. You got to shop. You're all geared to go. Got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. But I especially like the second verse. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. Where? <laughs> yeah, sit on a tack to stay, right? That was my favorite verse. And we would sing it quite loudly, that joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Another song I think of at Christmas time, especially, um, is Joy to the World. I remember when I was a little girl, um, our church in Shreveport, Louisiana, used to get on a hay ride. I don't, if you don't know what a hay ride is, it's a, a ride that you're sitting on hay. <laughs> and makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> And uh, we'd be on a hayride, and we'd go around to all the shut-ins. Now, I didn't know what a shut-in was, but a shut-in means somebody that can't come out. So we would go to all the shut-ins and sing Christmas carols, and some of them would offer us hot chocolate. But my favorite thing was when we'd go back to the church and have all the Christmas candies, those hard, crinkly candies. You know what I'm talking about. All the old people in here, they know. <laughs> Uh, the hard crinkly candies, and you know it was a big deal back then to get an apple and an orange at Christmas, right? Yeah, y'all shaking your head, you understand. You uh, young people don't understand that. We get fruit all year round. But back then, it was a big deal, and I still put an apple and orange in my children's stockings, and they promptly take them out, dump them in the fruit bowl, and that's it, you know. <laughs> They'd rather have the chocolate. Oftentimes, the Christmas carols are so familiar that we can sing all the words, but do we really stop to think about the words we're singing? That particular carol, joy to the world. Why can the world have joy? Because the Lord has come. Let earth, amen, you can clap because it's the truth. Where would we be without Jesus, right? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. And that's the question today. Is he king in your life? Is he the king? The king has come. And are we allowing him to be the ruler 
of our life. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. You think about that first Christmas. The first when Mary and Joseph were looking for a place to stay. And what did the sign say? No room. No room. There was no room in the inn when they got to Bethlehem. And they ended up in that stable. And that's the question for us today. Is there room in our hearts for him? I remember a few years ago a friend came and she gave me this little sign to put on my door. There is room here. Ha. Vacancy. Vacancy for Jesus to fill my heart. Let every heart prepare him room. And you know when we do prepare him room, then we're going to be singing with heaven and earth. That first Christmas, the world had something to be joyful for. I'm going to read just a little bit from Luke chapter 2. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. I would be too. Can you imagine? Pretty dark out there, no street lights, nothing to light anything up, and all of a sudden all these lights appear in heaven. They didn't even know about UFOs, you know. But all of a sudden, all these lights, I would be greatly afraid. And I just love what the angel said because God knows us, doesn't he? He knows what we're going through. He knows when we are afraid. And so many times life brings things that make us afraid. And the first few words the angel said was, do not be afraid. You know, that's the most often com quoted command in God's word. Because you see... We have a heavenly father who's in control. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows your life. He knows everything about you. Isn't that amazing and scary at the same time? He knows it all. And he is sovereign God. He is God, creator of the universe, and powerful, mighty God is in control of everything. If God cared didn't care, he would just let that sun get a little too close and we'd all be crispy critters. <laughs> we'd all be fried. He's in control. And he's in control of the events in your life too. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good news. We need good news, don't we? Sometimes the news is pretty bad. You almost don't want to watch the news because of all you hear. But the angels brought good news. Good news of great joy, which will be to all people. That's encouraging too. It's not just for a select few. It's for all. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Why does the world need a savior? Because way back when, in the Garden of Eden, goes all the way back to the very beginning. You know, Adam and Eve were created perfect. They had a relationship with God, a relationship with nothing hindering it. And God only gave them one rule, one commandment. He said, you can eat of all the trees in the garden, but this one, one tree, one command. And guess what? That's the very tree I believe Eve looked at every day and desired. You know, we, our flesh does not like to be told no. Isn't that interesting? No, you can't have spinach. <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> We'd all be craving spinach, wouldn't we? You can't have it. And God tacked on, not only do, are you not to partake of that tree but he said if you do you will surely die and God said it very emphatically you know what God says is the truth and when he said that to Adam and Eve they heard and yet what happened that temptation came and Eve partook of the tree Eve disobeyed God but not only Eve as she disobeyed and partook of the fruit, she handed it to her husband, Adam. 
And when Adam ate, it says their eyes were opened. Open to the truth that they would inherit death eternally. That was the penalty for disobedience. That was what they inherited because they went against what God said. And the sad thing is that every man after Adam and Eve, every woman, has inherited that sin nature. Isn't it incredible? You can see a little tiny baby. My daughter just had our seventh grandchild back in May. She lives in Belgium, and I went over there, was there when that little precious angel, Elizabeth Jane, was born. I love that my name's in there. But you know what? That little baby, as young as she is, she's now uh, almost seven months, she has a little temper. Oh, my goodness. Uh, if she has a toy and her mom says it's time not to play anymore, we're going to do something else, ooh, she doesn't like it. That little me, me, me comes out. You see, we have a little bird inside. It sings one song. Me, 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 me. <laughs> you know that for sure because when you get a group picture, who do you look for? You, 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 you. That's right. That's why we have those selfie sticks, right? I was at the beach last summer, and there was a girl. I mean, she was closer than that tree to me, and she had one of those sticks, and she was out there doing her poses. I'm like, I don't want to see this. I'm here to see the beautiful ocean, not you. And she was oblivious that anybody was around. The great thing is when you look at that group picture and it's not good of you, delete, <laughs> delete. Aren't we like that? You see, that self-nature, that sin nature is in us. Wow. We were all doomed. But God gave a promise in the garden. God promised that he would send a Savior. You see, they had disobeyed. And consequently, they were under the penalty of death. The wages of sin is death. But then it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life. Boy, I like to get gifts, don't you? You know, it's so cute. I, I went to a program. Some little children were doing this program at our women's Bible study a couple of weeks ago. And they asked the children what their favorite holiday was and every single one of them Christmas. Why? Why is Christmas your favorite holiday? The presents. It's the presents. You know, children are uh, unabashed about how they feel. We might say, well, you know, give all this elaborate reason why we like Christmas, but they just say up front, the presents. That's what it's all about. They also said mashed potatoes was their favorite food <laughs> for Christmas. We got the greatest gift of all. When God made that promise, he promised that one day he would send a Savior. You see, Adam and Eve couldn't redeem their situation. They couldn't buy back that perfect relationship they had with God because God is a holy God. And sin separates man from a holy God. They couldn't redeem it. Now, some of you older folks are going to remember this when I tell you. How many of you remember green stamps? Oh, my goodness. This is an old crowd. <laughs> All you young'uns, in the old days, when we go to the grocery store, they, it, how, depending on how many groceries you bought, they would give you green stamps. All right, how many of you remember the taste of green stamps? Ugh. I can remember because they gave you little books, and you had to lick the green stamps and put them in the book. Well, once they were in your book and you got several books, you could go to what they called the redemption store. Remember that? Yeah, you're going to buy back with these books wonderful gifts that they had in the redemption store. Well, Adam and Eve couldn't redeem themselves. They couldn't buy back their freedom. They couldn't buy back that penalty of, of death that they were under. And the interesting thing is the only redemption that could take place would be with a perfect sacrifice. Nobody could be the sacrifice because after Adam and Eve, we were all born sinners. We had that sin nature. Only God himself 
could be that perfect sacrifice. And so God's son, Jesus, was willing to leave the adoration, leave his throne in heaven, and become a man. Isn't that incredible that God loved us so much that he sent his son to be the sacrifice, to buy us back from the penalty of sin? God loved us that much. God in the flesh. God being willing to die for man. The creator being willing to die for the created. That's incredible. Galatians 4.4 4 said this. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. That long expected king who was foretold so many years before, God said, now, now's the time for Jesus to come. And because of you, we are now sons of God. He has sent forth his spirit, the spirit of his son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. What an awesome thing. We've been chosen by God. You know, that's, that's the cool thing about adoption. You get to choose. He chose us to be his adopted children. And now because the Spirit of God, if you've received that gift of salvation that God so freely offers, you now can cry, Abba, Father. He's your Father. He loves you. He loves you so much. And we celebrate, you know, when you have a birthday party, you're celebrating somebody's birth. Well, that's what we're celebrating now, this time of year, the birth of Jesus. We celebrate the fact that not only did he come to be born, but he also came to die. He came to die for us, to, to remove that penalty of sin from us. We once were in sin and death and the devil ruled, and now... We've been set free. Now Jesus can reign in our hearts. But here's the ticket. It's a choice. Am I going to allow him to reign in my heart and in my life? Am I going to allow him to be there and yield myself to him in every way? Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. That's the question. Have you received the king? Have you received Jesus into your heart? Is he reigning in you? Is he in control of you? Or is self still on the throne? That's the question. David rejoiced so many times in the Psalms. I love the Psalms. You know, when my daughter was having her baby in Belgium, they would not let me in the room. Only her husband, the midwife, and the doctor. So I was sitting in a hall. I don't speak the language, so I couldn't talk to anybody. And really, there was no, nobody out there to talk to. And my daughter was in labor for 28 hours. Now, about she started one day, and about noon of the next day, I was getting quite concerned because I wasn't getting news. They weren't running out giving me news reports. And so I was sitting in this hall by myself, and I, just, I was just really crying out to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit impressed me. Open your Bible and start reading the Psalms. You know, there's no greater way to get peace in your heart than to read the Psalms. And so I started with Psalm 1. And I just read and read and read. And I got, I think, midway in the Psalms. And seriously, that peace just enveloped me. Fear was there trying to completely take control. But as I read God's word, his peace just enveloped me. Just to say, God, you are there. You are working this out. I can't see with my physical eyes, but I can trust you. Whatever happens, I know you're there. I know you're with her. And about that time, my daughter in the States called on FaceTime. Thank God my phone worked. <laughs> and there she was, and she said, Mom, I want to pray with you. And I thank you, Jesus. You know, we're two or three together, together. Woo, you feel his power. So she was praying with me, and we were reading Psalms, and all of a sudden somebody came out and said, guess what? 
the baby's here. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I'm sure those people thought I was crazy, but I didn't care. It was such a relief, such a relief. So David, you know, when David wrote the Psalms, it was usually when he had been in a battle, when he had been in a difficult situation. And old David, he seemed to be in all kinds of situations all the time. He always had somebody after him, starting with his father-in-law. Isn't that exciting? Well, you think you have relative problems. He had big ones. His father-in-law threw a spear at him one time. <laughs> Couldn't figure the guy out. One day he wanted you to play a tune for him. The next day he's throwing spears at you. <laughs> David knew where to go when he was in trouble. He knew where he could cry out. And in Psalm 35, I love Psalm 35, David was in a pickle. He was in a difficult place and he was praying for God's intervention. He, was, he had a, many enemies that were coming against him. And he said, plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. That might be a good prayer for you during the Christmas season. Maybe some people will be striving with you to go to God, turn to him. We're all carrying heavy burdens. We go through difficult places in our lives. We go through storms that we don't know are around the corner. I used to live in Colorado, and they said, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, and it'll change. You never knew when a storm was brewing. And you know what? So many times in my life, I haven't known the storms that were around the corner. But isn't it awesome to know that he knows? He knows everything you're going through. I was in uh, New Hampshire recently. And it broke my heart. Lady after lady would come and share with me how their children were caught up in drugs. What do you do? You want so badly to deliver that child. You want so badly to bring that child to Jesus so that child can experience his power in their lives to be set free from these drugs. Mother after mother after mother came to me with this plea. Please pray for my child, pleading, pleading that cause. And, and as we prayed, as we sought the Lord, you know the awesome thing about our God? He hears your prayers. And he's powerful. He's mighty. Sometimes we put him in a little box under the tree. Oh, he can't do that. Well, yes, he can. He is able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything we can imagine. I'll never forget when a big storm came around the corner in my life, my 19-year-old daughter was murdered. That's certainly something you don't expect. But I want to tell you, my God was faithful. Faithful in every way. Faithful in his comfort. Faithful in his peace. Even faithful to produce joy in my heart because I knew she was with him. She would no longer be under the tyranny of this man that was in her life. She had been set free. And I also know I will see her again. God is so faithful when we go through times that are difficult, when we go through battles. Many times around this year, this time of year, we have battles with finances, maybe even lacking a job. He's faithful. Isn't God amazing how he provides? And it is just, you're just astounded. You know, we pray, oh, Lord, provide. And then when he does, we're going, you provided. Whoa, why are we shocked? He has a cattle on a thousand hills. I can come to him with my need. I'll never forget, we were moving to Colorado from California years ago. And, and I was thinking about how cold it was going to be. And all I had was a thin California coat. So I began praying, Lord, we, we're, we're going to be cold over there. Would you provide for that? Well, my husband grew a beard, provided for his face. <laughs> yeah. And I went to visit a friend. I said nothing to anyone but to the Lord. That's the cool part. You can go in your prayer closet and just cry out to him. I went to visit my friend, and she said, Did you see those bags at my front door? And I said, Yes, I did. She said, Those are for you. I said, For me? She said, yeah, go look. Inside those bags were electric blankets for everyone in my family. Oh, God cares. He doesn't want me to be.
be cold in Colorado. He's a faithful God. He cares about every aspect of my life. He cares about children who maybe aren't walking with the Lord. I've had a couple of those too. Boy, does God get a hold of them. I love how God brings them back. My one went to liberal UCLA, and she went to the liberal classes at UCLA, all the feminist classes, because she was not walking with the Lord. And when she got in those classes, she started hearing lies. And she knew the truth because she was raised knowing the Lord. And the, it got her so conflicted, she went and bought a Bible and started reading it and came back to Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. He can get them anywhere. Isn't that cool? I just want you to know, if you've got a kid who's running away, just sit God on them. Let me tell you. I love this because in this Psalm 35... Uh, David got excited about that, and he said this. He said, let their way be dark and slippery. Now, that might be a little hard to pray for mama, but I'll tell you what, dark and slippery, they're going to start grabbing for something, and Jesus is who they need. And let, listen to this, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Woo, sick them angels on them. It's a good thing. Angels know just how to get them. God is faithful. Family members may be in addiction. We talked about that. Or maybe you're struggling with addiction. Abba, Father, he cares. He can empower you by his Holy Spirit to be set free. Maybe you have marriage struggles. Boy, they can get pretty difficult around Christmas. I remember the worst thing I I dreaded at Christmas was putting the Christmas tree into the Christmas tree holder. My husband would get so frustrated because for some reason, every time we picked a tree, it had a crooked bottom and he couldn't make it fit. And oh, he would have a hissy. And it was just like, oh dear, dad's on a roller coaster of anger here. (laughs) We can go to the Lord. You know, recently I was having my devotions in bed, just talking to the Lord, reading the word. And all of a sudden, this thought hit me. You know, my husband's having a hard time hearing. He's driving me crazy, God. I say something, he asks me a question, I give him the answer, and he's, he asks me the question again because he didn't hear the answer. And then the second time, I answer the question, and, and he still didn't hear it. And the third time, I'm mean as a junkyard dog yelling back at him. And he says, what, why are you being so mean? Why are you being so deaf? I mean, <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking about it, having my devotions. Isn't it interesting how your mind can go crazy places, having your devotions? And then I'm thinking, and he can't remember anything anymore either. Every time, do you remember so-and-so, your student you had two years ago? No. Do you remember so-and-so in our church, our, one of our assistant pastors? No. He doesn't remember nothing. Oh, I'm just sitting there thinking, mm, 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 mm. what is his problem? He can't hear. He can't remember. Boy, I am so good. I can hear and I can remember. The Lord got, let me get away with it one day. Second day, I'm sitting there. All those thoughts kept coming again. What in the world? Well, this time the Lord said, you ready to go to the woodshed? I have given you the ability to hear And to remember. And I could take it just like that. I'm thinking, whoa, I'm going to get Alzheimer's. I know. (laughs) Listen, the Lord said, you are sitting in pride. I felt like one of those big fat sausages. You know, when you take, you've got those kibasa sausage. And you take your fork and punch it. And all of a sudden, all that (laughs) grease runs out. That's what my pride was looking like to God. I mean, he called me up short. He gave me a whooping. And he said, listen, you better not take for granted that you can hear and that you can remember. And I've allowed you to do that to be a helpmate to your husband. Let me tell you what. God got a hold of me that day. Oh, Lord, I know you hate pride. And that's exactly what I was filled with, that pride. Aren't you thankful that God shows you the truth about you? He doesn't let you stew in your juices. He shows you the truth about you. David was being tested with doubts and fears. He was being attacked by his enemies. But he knew where to go. 
He knew the remedy. Do you remember Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20? I'm so thankful my name doesn't have fat at the end of it. <laughs> Jehoshaphat, it says, had all these enemies coming against him. And as these enemies were coming against him, it says he feared. That's a natural reaction when you feel like everybody's against you. He feared, but he was wise. He sought the Lord. That's what we need to do when we fear. We can run to our high tower. We can run to our God. He's a faithful God, and he will be there when you run to him, when you cry out to him. So many times in scriptures, go through the scripture and mark the times he says, I cried out, I cried out. Or he hears our cry because he does. Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord, and, the God, and God gave him the most amazing remedy. He said, I want the praise group to go out before the soldiers. I want them to go out and start singing and praising God, and the soldiers are behind them with the weapons. Can you imagine? I'm going to sing, but boy, am I going to be shaking in my boots. But this was God's prescription. This was God's way for the battle to be won. And God said over and over again to Jehoshaphat, and he says it to you today, the battle is not yours, it's mine. He's the one who can fight whatever battle you're going through, whatever storm is in your life, whatever dark time, take it to him, cry out to him. He's the greatest warrior of all. And he gives victory. As they were going out and singing and praising God, what did God do? God caused the enemies to attack each other. Is that cool? I think we could use some of that in Iraq and Afghanistan, don't you think? They attacked each other. The victory was the Lord's. And it says all throughout the land, they knew that God had given them the victory. That's what he wants to show in our lives. I can say to my soul, see, uh, David, I keep wanting to say Paul, it was David, and he said this. He says, verse 3, draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Sometimes you don't feel it, but you can cry out to the Lord and say, God, you say to my soul, I am your salvation. Oh, God, give me that faith to believe you, that faith to trust in you, that faith to know that you're a faithful God. And you know, that faith is built up as we get in God's word, as we spend time with him. David, as he ran to the Lord, he knew that God would be his salvation, his refuge, his strength, and even his joy. Verse uh, 9 says this, My soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? Delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Listen, he can deliver you from that thing that is too strong for you. That thing that is overwhelming you. I love another psalm. It says, when my heart is overwhelmed, oh God, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That rock of trust, that rock of faith, trusting in Jesus and God who is the faithful one. I can legitimately trust in him. Now, when we hear the word joy, we automatically think, oh, that means we feel good all the time. Is that possible? No, definitely not. Joy is this. It's the settled assurance that God is in control of all, and I say all, the details of my life. Do you believe that? If you've allowed him to come into your heart and into your life, he's in control of every single detail of your life. It's the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. You see, when I sat in that hall and that fear was overwhelming me, as I read God's word, I just know, God, you're faithful. It's all going to be all right. You're going to work it out. You know, finally, 
the midwife came out right after she was born. And I wasn't supposed to go in, but she said to me, I want you to come with me right now. Your daughter needs you. I went in. My daughter had lost a lot of blood. Very, very weak. So weak, she couldn't even hold the baby. And I went in there. I grabbed her hand. It makes me want to cry. And I started praying. And just like that, it was like a, a bud, flower, just opening up. She just... Strength came into her body. The Lord just strengthened her. Now, when the baby was born, they handed the baby to my son-in-law because, you know, the skin-on-skin skin thing. We never knew that before. And they live, but anyway. <laughs> but now they do that skin-on-skin. Skin. Well, they handed the baby to my son-in-law, and they said, just hold her close to you. And he had his shirt off, and he, he told her, she started sucking his nipple. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That was the first thing he told me. She's trying to suck me. <laughs> oh, boy. That was a surprise for him. He said, there's nothing there. <laughs> Everything is going to be all right. What's the worst thing that could happen to any of us? We think. Death. Death. But you see, when you have accepted that gift of salvation from Jesus, you don't have to worry about that. Honey, you put that pot back on the back of the burner because you're going to be with him for eternity. I love that, don't you? Hey, hallelujah. He conquered death. He conquered sin. We have the victory. We Remember Paul Harvey, some of you old folks, Paul Harvey? He said, now for the rest of the story. Well, we know the rest of the story. God is in control, and we are going to have a victorious life with him forever. Hallelujah. Ultimately, everything's going to be all right. The determined choice to praise God in every situation is joy. Now, do you feel like it? Not necessarily. It's hard to praise God when it's difficult. It's hard. But listen. If we will start praising him, if we will start thanking him, Lord, I... You know, I can't say I thank you for this situation because it's really tough, but I thank you that you're in control. I thank you that you have a plan. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that I can depend on you. I thank you that you're a faithful God. Just go down the list and start thanking him. And you know what happens? Something happens inside of you. You get your eyes off of you and your mully grubs that you're dwelling in, and you get your eyes back on him. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you that you can work in me and say to my soul, I am your salvation. I can thank him. You know, thanksgiving brings peace, and peace brings joy. Happiness and, and happy feelings come and go. You know that song, be happy. Well, sometimes you are and sometimes you're not. We as women, we can be mighty unhappy. You know, they say when mama ain't happy, nobody is happy. And that's the truth. We have good things that happen. We have bad things that happen. Things that disappoint us or hurt us or fill us with sorrow. But we have someone we can turn to, Abba Father. And when we have that joy that's produced by knowing Jesus and by knowing his love and by knowing that he's a sovereign, mighty God, that he wants to fight our battles, then... As we experience same in, uh, pain and sorrow, we also can experience his joy. Joy in him, joy in prayer, being able to talk to him no matter where. Don't have to use special language. I can just talk to him as I would talk to you. Having joy in his word. David knew where to get reassured of God's love. He knew where to go to get reassured that God was in control and God would fight his battles. And that's exactly what he did. He cried out to the Lord. And then that verse, I love that verse, my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. That's a choice. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. I choose as an act of my will to be joyful in you. I maybe can't be joyful in this situation, but I can be joyful in you. Romans 5, 3 says, we rejoice in our sufferings because it's producing something. Ooh, it's producing good stuff. James 1, 2, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience, endurance, 
be, that you will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Is that cool or what? Now, the last part of that joy to the world says, let every heart prepare him room. And like we said, there was no room for Jesus in the motels of Bethlehem. What about us? You know, every Christmas we kind of run ourselves ragged, don't we? Why do we do it all at Christmas? Christmas cookies, Christmas card, Christmas presents, Christmas decorations. Oh, my goodness. We run around like a chicken with its head cut off. Have you ever seen that? Do you know you cut off the head of a chicken? I know you didn't come here to hear this, but I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you cut off the head of a chicken, and he keeps running. Isn't that unreal? Nervous energy. And that's what we go on sometimes. Got dinners to plan, programs to attend, friends to have over, relatives to visit, decorating, baking, presents to wrap, open, and return. <laughs> it's not like your goal is to be busy, but it just happens that way, doesn't it? Last season it passed, and at the end you felt exhausted and ashamed. You had missed the real reason for the season, the real meaning of Christmas. I want to challenge you this year. Let it be different. Let it be different because I'm sure the squeeze is already happening for you, right? This season, will you have room in your schedule, in your thoughts, in your heart? Will we have room for him? Taking that time at the beginning of your day to cry out to him, to take those burdens and give them to him. Even the burden of buying the right gift. Do you know he cares about that too? He can lead you to the very gift. He can lead you to whatever you need. You can trust him. He's faithful. No, no room for quiet reflection and solitude. No room for Jesus. A friend gave me a little plaque the other day. Or the la a few, excuse me, a few years ago. I don't have Alzheimer's. I have some timers. <laughs> This little plaque said, there is room here. I love that. Is there room here? Maybe some of you have never had Jesus in your heart, in your life. And he's saying, is there going to be room for me in your life? Will you ask me to come into your life and forgive you of your sins? Because I want to come in. I want to give you that gift of forgiveness for your sins. I want to give you that gift of being delivered from the penalty of sin. I want to give you that gift of peace. That's the first thing I felt when I accepted Jesus as my Savior. I felt his peace that passes all understanding. That gift of joy. Joy in the midst of whatever's happening. Knowing he loves you and he's in control. It takes intentional choices. I choose, God, to put you first. To put you first in my shopping. To put you first in my busyness. To put you first in my day. To put you first before my family. To go to you to say, oh, Lord, give me the grace. I don't want to be that crazy woman that they remember at Christmas time. I want to have your peace and your joy to spend time with them. No room in the schedule means no opportunity for Jesus to do something surprising in your life. No room for quiet and reflection is no chance to hear his still, small voice in your thoughts. As you make room in your life for Jesus, then you can proclaim joy to the world. The Lord has come. Listen, it's going to be unusual for people to see joy in somebody at Christmas time. Most people aren't joyful, but he wants to let his joy shine through. Psalm 40, uh, 98 says this, Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. He has won a mighty victory by his power and holiness. Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break out in praise. You see, they had break dancing back then. Break <laughs> out in praise. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, but sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp and melodious song. Boy, you want to carry these guys around with you, right? Whoo, come on, guys, strike it up. 
with a heart with trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Can you imagine being in your front yard? <laughs> Make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the king. Raise him up. Raise him high. The son of God was born to die. Amen? That's what we should do. Ask the Lord to release you to make a joyful noise to him. Make it loud so that the whole world will see that you have the greatest gift inside of you. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let's pray. Lord, how we thank you and praise you that you loved us so much that you came to this earth to pay for the penalty of our sin. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you're with us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. How we thank you that we can cry out, Abba, Father. Lord, I lift up everyone in this room. You know the hearts. You know the lives. I pray if there's any in this room today, God, who have walked away from you, that they would take time to get back. I thank you, God, that we can say, forgive me. And, oh, God, we can have that walk with you and know you and your peace and your joy. I pray for those, Lord, here who maybe have never known you, have never made room in their hearts for you. Oh, God, I pray that you would do a work in that heart to show them, God, their need for you. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, King of kings. We have such great joy because you have come to this world. In Jesus' name, we pray. And I just want to say, if you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, there will be ladies up here to pray with you. Or if maybe you have a prayer need, something you're going through, one of your battles, you can come and they with you will cry out to the Lord. He's faithful. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Janie. Don't you just want to have her at your Christmas dinner table just like, okay, she said she'll come. Okay. Oh. But she gave us many, many awesome truths and treasures and some action words in there. I heard some, I heard some little homework assignments as we, we leave here today and some choices that we have to make. So um, I've heard Janie several times, always a, a huge blessing and um, just life and real life. And she's lived real life and deep life. So um, I pray and hope that you all were blessed by her for sharing today. Sorry, my glasses, I can't see out of them. Um, so she mentioned prayer, and I loved in the testimony that she told about Abby, her daughter, um, praying, coming together and praying before the end result, you know, sometimes that's the way of it, of you're in the midst of something, and maybe you're waiting for God to move, but you're not praying about it. And so I want to encourage you, as Janie said, if you're in the midst of something today, um, that you would come forward. And it is a step of faith, ladies. It is a statement of your faith before your Lord to come forward and partner with someone in prayer. And you don't have to say the whole story. You might just say, I have a prodigal, or um, pray for my marriage, or I need a job, or I'm lonely, or I'm battling depression, or these are all things that all of us as women and people living this side of heaven deal with. There's no shame, there's no um, condemnation or, or anything from any of these gals that are going to be up here to pray except love and faith to go before the throne of grace and ask the Lord to help you in your time of need. And then I love the, the, the second part of the testimony when she prayed with Abby that strength came. And strength comes when we pray and we go before the Lord. So um, the gals will be up front, as she mentioned. They have little name tags on. Janie, some of us will be in the front, and we would love to just talk and pray with you. So um, a couple of 
Quick announcements before we leave. Um, for about a half an hour out back, there's some coffee and water and stuff left over if you would like to go out there and, and, and grab a, another coffee or some water before you go and uh, do more shopping. The Mary Market will stay open till 3.30, um, some extended hours. That's also open to the public. So if you have friends or family who aren't here and you want to text them and tell them to come on down, um, we would love that. The photo booth, um, Ariel and crew, I don't know if they zipped out real quick. Thank you so much. What a blessing. It's so much fun. I saw so much joy coming out of that little room. So um, it's awesome. They'll be there for about a, a half an hour. And um, all of you should have received those little ornaments. They're beautiful. And every single one of those was handmade for you this day. So make sure you get one of those if you didn't. And um, thank you, Janie. Give her one more thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Thank you to Hillary and Kate and Emma and Sean. Blessing. Now, um, out at a table in the lobby, they, um, Hillary and Kate, have some of their music CDs. I, they have, you have a Christmas. You have a, they have a Christmas one and a couple other selections, and um, we encourage you to stop by there and pick up one of those. Those, are, those fit so perfect in stockings, I want you to know. <laughs> and um, let's see, when I'm out. I think that's it. We love you. And oh, I wanted to just say, um, I loved Janie's definition of joy. And um, I just was sitting there and, and, you know, we're like, let joy live loud, let joy live loud. And I just want to encourage you to remind yourself that, you know, when it comes, because it's coming in the next couple weeks, the stress and the pressure and all those things. Hey, we had a crooked tree in our house this year, and exactly what you described went down, but God was faithful, so it was awesome. But I was thinking, I want to say to myself, let, not joy, but I want to put her definition in, let the settled assurance that God is in control of all live loud in my life. Can we help each other and encourage one another to, to live and, and speak to, you to, to one another that way as the season unfolds and then into the new year. And we encourage you ladies, many of you are here from Calvary Vista. Um, interestingly, we're studying the Psalms this year in our women's Bible study. So um, starting back in January, we'll be here. If you're a visitor, you're welcome to come. But if you're, you fellowship in another church, get into the word of the Lord. You know, not a New Year's resolution. Not a New Year's resolution in the sense of something we say we're going to do and then three weeks later we're not doing it anymore. Choose. Choose to walk in the truth, to abide and abound in the word of God and let joy and peace and thanksgiving rule and reign in your life. Amen? Okay, let's stand. I think we have one more song. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature sing, in heaven and nature sing, in heaven and heaven nature sing. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. Our fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love 
Okay, the Lord bless you. Merry Christmas to all and enjoy the rest of the, you know, you're invited to stay on the campus and fellowship and just hang out and enjoy, maybe share, maybe share what was a treasure from today's message with one another. But if you're on your way out, safe travels home. God bless you.